Are you guys ready? Let's get going. Let's get cooking. Unbelievable, this crowd out here. Edina. You guys don't mess around. All right, we have three outstanding chefs. They're going to have one hour to cook. They do not know what is in this basket, the secret ingredient. They've been uh, presented yesterday with some food that they can use to cook with, but otherwise they have to focus on this secret ingredient. Chefs, are you ready to cook? I will introduce the chefs and our judges once we get this going. But here it is, the secret ingredient. Very dramatic, very dramatic. It is... That is rhubarb. The secret ingredient is rhubarb. Because I'm pretty sure Lori planted this in her backyard and this stuff grows like weeds. So we are just moving out the rhubarb. Chefs, help yourself to the rhubarb. You have one hour. So our time will be up at, what is it, at 6.45? I trust that someone is keeping the time. And hopefully it's someone who hasn't spent too much time at the Edina liquor table over there. But we're ready to rock. We have three outstanding chefs. We were going to have four chefs here tonight, but one of our chefs got sick. And uh, I think it's important to know that the health department in the city of Edina has said no. No sick chefs making food on our stage today. All right, I want to know who people in the room are cheering for. Over here we have Chef Brad Berg from Pittsburgh Blue. Chef Berg does have the distinction of making the shortest trip over here to the Westin tonight. Pittsburgh Blue, of course, over in the Galleria. It's been there for a little over two years now, right? So, And we did a WCCO-TV story on Chef uh, Brad this weekend. It aired on Saturday and Sunday. And off-camera... Chef told me that he never really cooks. He's just a big shot manager. And so Dan here, his sous chef, is sitting there like, yep, that's right. That's how that goes. But when you look this good, you get to be the glory, right? I mean, let's be honest. But he's excited to show off his chops. He's got uh, quite the pedigree, a lot of great experience. So these guys are going to work chopping the rhubarb over here right now. We've got strawberries, we got rhubarb. The chefs are assigned to do two things. They have about 30 minutes to come up with an appetizer and then another 30 minutes to come up with an entree. So we don't know what they're doing. They've been thinking about this. I know Brad was thinking about this last week, trying to think up what's he gonna cook, what are some of the options he could do. But they didn't know that secret ingredient. All right, let's meet our next chef right here in the middle. This is Evan Freeberg from Crave. Let's have a nice round of applause for Evan. Evan started, who here has been to the malt shop? The malt shop. So Evan, when he was 15, was a dishwasher at the malt shop in Southwest Minneapolis. So that was about 17 years ago. So he probably washed some of your dishes 17 years ago at the malt shop. Yeah. So we went to the Scottsdale Culinary Institute in Arizona, right? And you've been at Crave for? Almost two years now. Almost two years. Very good. You had the second shortest journey. You're slightly farther away in the Galleria than Brad is. Yeah, we just uh, we didn't have too far to go. We just had to bring some stuff down through the mall. But, um, yeah. Now, with both of you guys being in the Galleria, like, you guys absolutely hate each other, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, the Crave-Pittsburgh Blue War is legendary. Crave had the Galleria pretty much themselves for a little while, and then Parasole said, nope, here comes the blue. All right, so uh, Crave, Chef Evan, he's got the courage. He's going it alone. Our other two chefs brought sous chefs. The typical Crave Swagger says, no, I'm doing it by myself. And our last team is from Pinstripes right here in Edina. Let's hear it for 
Chef Nelson Pinos from Pinstripes. A lot of fun, Pinstripes, of course. They got the bowling, they got great food, and Chef Nelson is hard at work here. He has been, he's been studying up, ready to rock. They're working on their appetizer right now using that first 30-minute bucket of time. What are you guys up to over here? This already looks and smells great. That's a solid, solid chopping technique. Again, we got strawberry and rhubarb. Chef, do you know what you're making already? Absolutely. What are we doing? A rhubarb compote with brie cheese. All right, rhubarb compote, blue cheese. Oh, brie cheese, this is brie. Yeah, look at that. All right, very good, that looks great. So we have three chefs up here battling and to decide who is the best chef tonight, uh, we are relying on three judges. So let's meet our judges right now because we really appreciate them being here. Closest to the stage, let's have a nice round of applause for Brian B.T. Turner. So BT came fresh from the radio. BT hosts middays at K-Twin. Well, you probably had the day off. There's a Twins game today, right, BT? Oh, we, we still do all the shows online. Oh, it goes and online. And through the mobile app. Oh, how The about free that? K-Twin mobile app. Download it right now at the Android market or the iPhone store. Get it for your smartphone. Your smartphone's smarter than you, so have the phone <laughs> do the work for you. BT is a legendary foodie in town. Probably one of the first radio media people to really give real coverage to the local food world. Thank you, Jason. I have a fine foods company, and we sell our products all across the Twin Cities as well. So it's sort of a family I, thing for us, too. I was at a co-op today in Burnsville, Valley Natural Foods. They and sell our products there. They yeah, pointed thanks. out it's L-E-T, your products there. Mm -hmm. yeah, so very good. I didn't buy it because I'm a cheap media person. He so did not buy the product, but he appreciated no. that it was there and right. it displayed so nicely. It was beautiful. At Valley Natural co -op. I just gave a plug to it, so as always, you can feel free to send some over for free. I think I'm the only judge here on the dais that has a wine glass and it's empty. That's wrong. Yeah. I don't that know if wrong. anybody can help a, help a fella out here. I know. Bueller, anyone? Bueller? BT, they offered me some bottled water, which tells you that they... they the folks here don't really have a good handle on how I operate. <laughs> no, they don't, Jason. Our next, uh, our next judge is Sue Zellickson. Let's have a nice round of applause for Sue Zellickson. So Sue is a James Beard Award winner. You have done radio food coverage forever and ever. I think I was a little bit older than BT, too. You were? I was wrong. <laughs> As soon as I said that BT was one of the first, I'm like, no, Sue, Sue is doing I was her born segment a few on years CCO old. Radio. <laughs> Don't forget Joyce Lamont. That's too. right. That's it's right. Fine. You're right. She I'm just going me. to say that all of you are pioneers and legends. That's right. Wayne, too. And Wayne is. <laughs> For yeah, sure. That is true. And now you are. You're the baby. <laughs> I am the child. Yes. Although I was getting a little grief when they announced that I won, like, the young Minnesotan of the year. That's pretty good. The JCs have a very broad latitude <laughs> for how they define young. Uh, Sue, you got you write in Minnesota Monthly. You and I used to share a page before we did. Before, uh, well, you, before I made a run for you it. You jumped I ship. I did jump <laughs> ship to Minneapolis St. Paul magazine. You also interviewed my granddaughter this noon. So Sue's granddaughter was on our Newton show, and this tells you kind of the example that Sue and her family does. Because what a delight. Your daughter just turned 17. Right. She's a student at Breck School. Correct. And she has organized this huge fundraiser where she's bringing in like this nationally known hip hop dancer to do these seminars this weekend. Right. And she's donating all of the money that's raised. Every dime goes to charity. Goes to this to women's charity. Girls, yeah. Yeah. It's really nice. But Thank that's you. the example from the family, right? I mean, Sue, seriously, every single charity event in town. No, I, not everyone. I see you at just about every event. It's well, that amazing. means you're there, too. Wow, that is true. <laughs> that is true. So, All right. Thank you. Well, thanks, Sue. Thank uh, you. Our last, our last judge is, we said he's a legend, and Wayne won the James, Wayne Kostrowski, everybody. Let's have a nice round of applause for Wayne. Yay! Wayne founded Taste of the NFL. Who's been to Taste of the NFL in here? It's a great, Wayne has been here, yes. Started right every, here. Every year, one or two there, Wayne. Yes. 22 years this has been going. 23 years. 
How much money has been raised for local food shelves, uh, local and national food banks? Uh, as of last year, the finish in New York, the grand total for the first 23 years, we've distributed $22 million in, across 32 food banks. Wow. That's amazing. Started here in Minnesota. Just started here, right? An event you were doing here in town. And when the Super Bowl comes back, it'll be back in Minnesota. Oh, it's going to be awesome when it's here in town, right? It should be the biggest. It Might as well. It should be in Minnesota. It's, birthplace. Yeah. Well, it's excellent. It's great to have you guys here. We have uh, the judges are extremely qualified for this. They have to judge. So there's a 40 point rubric. So the the contestants who are hard at work here know the categories that they're trying to judge in. So uh, you guys have to rate on flavor, texture, color, and plating. And the judges are asked to pay special attention to the use of the secret ingredient, rhubarb. Rhubarb. Rhubarb is a pretty strong ingredient, true, too. So it'll be interesting how the chefs use it uh, in conjunction with their other ingredients on their dish. Let's check in with our chefs and see what they're up to here. We know what Nelson's doing. Brad, what are you guys up to over here? What are we doing for the appetizer court? Uh, right now, I'm just uh, sauteing up some rhubarb with some strawberries and some ginger, and we'll make a little puree out of that. Uh, we'll serve some scallops on top of that. News, but I didn't hear Sounds good. Song. Scallops sound yeah, pretty good, right? A little rhubarb. Woman was coming. <laughs> I'll tell you guys what, it smells fantastic up here yeah. on stage. Evan, what are you working on for your appetizer corn? Uh, we got a little bacon going here with some shallot, uh, asparagus, and a little garlic. Uh, pretty soon I'm going to pull this out and get the uh, rhubarb going, get it cooking, get it a little bit tender. What are we doing with the rhubarb? Uh, we're going to make a rhubarb vinaigrette out of it. Ooh, very nice. All right. So we have a rhubarb compote going on. We have a vinaigrette. It's going to be some strawberry flavors, some vinaigrette, some very different dishes I think we're going to get. The brie will be a real nice. Look at this dish over here. We'll give you guys a close-up. Look at the pinstripes appetizer with this brie. Just beautiful, right? We're about 10 minutes into our very first Taste of Edina Chef Challenge. 10 minutes in, Jason? 10 in? We're about 10 in, yeah. On the line right now, it's pride. It's just pride on the line. You want to be the winner. You want your restaurant to be the winner. It is, this is very festive. This one's gonna have some interesting textures, I think, with the asparagus, strawberry, bacon. So the chefs get to do two different things. They make an appetizer first, and then the second thing is an entree. Total window of time is 30 minutes. As we all know, you eat with your eyes first, so the look of the dish is important. Right? right. Looks good. Looks real good. The chefs have to make three plates, one for each judge. Next year, I'll be in on the rule advising and ask for four plates, one for, uh, for the host. No wine, no food? What in the heck is going on I here? know. We got rules here, Derusha. I, I don't we know. got rules. I don't know. Eat off ours. All right, I can eat off their dishes. Very good. Like, Chef Brad gave me a nice photo of my friend Scott's, the VP at Vitamix. I just saw him a couple weeks ago on a oh. trip to Cleveland. We got a money shot. You Thanks got, again, Chef. You got the Vitamix selfie, which is... Vitamix selfie. Very nice. You guys ready to rock over here? Let's get, let's get a big... Uh, uh, Scott, if you can come and get us a shot of the Pinstripes appetizer. Because the team from Pinstripes is done with their appetizer. Let's have a nice round wow. of applause. We're going to show it on the big screen, and then Chef will tell us what it is, and he can bring it right over to the judges. Chef, uh, talk about your appetizer. Well, 
after I saw the secret ingredient, my only thought that came out to me was nothing better to make a rhubarb compo with a beautiful little strawberry just to help uh, balance the, the flavors with a brie cheese and a little sunflower salad with a red wine vinaigrette dressing. What is, uh, it looks like the brie, is this breadcrumbs that, uh, that it's in? A little bit of breadcrumbs just to help the texture when you bite it in to balance all the flavors. And, and you know, when you eat it, your palate is the one to eat more and more and more, you know? All right, you see it on the big screen. You might have not have thought about this kind of beautiful food at Pinstripes, but let's have another round of applause for Shelf Nelson Pinos. And we're gonna bring, if we could bring these dishes over to the judges, they can taste this appetizer. We're gonna let the chefs, when they're, as they're done, they can come and bring it down. So our judges will be able to taste the dishes as they're hot. Man, nothing better than a, than a baked brie. And here, you guys, it wasn't exactly baked. You kind of pan fried it a little bit, but the same effect, right? That's the front. Yeah, beautiful. You get a beautiful coloring on that, on the breadcrumbs there by pan frying it up. So our judges will taste and then uh, we'll bring over the next dishes as these chefs finish up. The time limit is strict. They have a one hour bucket of time. We advise them to use 30 minutes for the appetizer and 30 minutes for the entree. We have 44 minutes left in the competition, so we're just about 16 minutes in. I'm gonna come take a taste. And then BT and I are gonna get this wine situation worked out. Brother, the way this works between you and me is you get the first bite. Check that out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. I tell you what, I've never had a uh, a baked hunk of brie that I haven't liked. So <laughs> that's really beautiful. All right, we're about 15 minutes into the competition here. The secret ingredient, again, is rhubarb. Check in with Evan. He can tell us what he is up to. You're watching it live on the big screen here. What are we doing? So I'm making a base for our vinaigrette. Um, so I cooked some of the rhubarb in there a little bit early to really get it tender so I can mix it in with the dressing. And then I just put in um, some more rhubarb that I want to leave a little bit firmer so you can have the chunks of there in the salad as well. So you really experience the secret ingredient. You're gonna taste yes, it. Yep, yeah. yep. You're gonna know it's there for sure. All right, very good. All very different dishes. It's so fun to see what these chefs come up with. Especially, you know, in your restaurant, you're cooking your menu, you're kind of doing your thing, you're cranking it out. So to really have to work from scratch and say, all right, we're gonna create Two recipes, an entree and an appetizer. I shouldn't be surprised that Brad made scallops since for our segment on TV this weekend, he was cooking up some scallops. He taught me the secret what I've been messing up at home. Because who makes fish at home, right? I do fish a lot. My kids love fish, love it. 
eight and six year old fish is so easy for kids to eat. But he said, you gotta get that pan super hot and that way the fish won't stick to it. So there you go. I used that this, uh, I actually did that last night when we made tuna steaks from Whole Foods, one of our sponsors here tonight. All right, very striking. The chefs brought their own dishes so they could make sure they have the look that they want with this dish. You see Chef Brad from Pittsburgh Blue, that striking black dish, that shock of red color right in the middle. And then you're gonna see that beautiful white scallop on top. It has been fun to watch as, as our food scene has continued to grow and get better and better here in the Twin Cities. I think the artistry has continued to grow too, where you're seeing so many beautiful plates presented. So one of our sponsors today, as I just mentioned, is Whole Foods, and Nikki Townsend is the catering chef from Whole Foods right here in Edina. Nikki, can you come up? Let's have a nice round of applause for Whole Foods. How are you, Nikki? I am so fantastic. This is pretty fun, right? Yeah, I'm having a great time. It's awesome. Are you glad it's these guys up here cooking and not you? Indeed, yes. I'll do all my cooking behind the scenes. <laughs> Whole Foods provided uh, the all of the food that we're using here too. Food, all of the ingredients. So you know it's great, healthy, organic, natural food. Boy, I tell you, having Whole Foods, and we're seeing them pop up all throughout the Twin Cities now, uh, people are really responding, right? People are really responding. People understand now the foodie movement has happened. They want to know where their food comes from, that it's healthy, it's good for them, that you're not getting a bunch of weird ingredients, and we provide that to them. Have you seen that YouTube song, that the Whole Foods parking lot song? Where uh, you know that? I do not know that, so I'm not going to sing that song. If right, you got to look it up. You got to look it up. It's very funny about the shenanigans that happens in the Whole Foods parking lot. There are shenanigans that happen not only in the parking lot, but in the store and in the kitchen. Now we're getting to the meat. Now we're getting to the real scandal that we want to hear about. I like. It's crazy. It's crazy back there. Well, we're so glad you guys could be a part of this. We really appreciate your support. I know the chefs love working with great ingredients, so thanks so much for doing it. Yeah, we're, we're happy to be here. Come see us. We're, we're back there somewhere, and we've got some more great food for you guys to try. What are you guys serving up out there? I am serving a balsamic roasted pear and gorgonzola crostini, as well as a roast beef and horseradish crostini. And I've also got a chipotle chicken lime avocado crisp. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks so much for coming. Let's have a nice round of applause for Whole Foods. Thank you for your support here at the first Taste of Edina Chef Challenge. All right, we're past. We're about 20 minutes in, right? Hey, Darasha, there's wine coming in. Oh, well, there we go. It's right in the LZ, right in the landing zone. Now we're talking. And what are you drinking here? This is a lovely... Nice rosé. Rosé. Spring Very and nice. summer. Love my rosés. It is rosé time, isn't it? Cheers to you guys. All right. So we're gonna have the judges kind of talk through their scores. This is kind of cool, right? I've done a lot of cooking competitions and a lot of times as a judge, you don't want to talk about it. But not these three judges. They're happy to, to tell us what happened. BT, you want to go first and tell us what you thought of the uh, brie cheese with the rhubarb compote? Do you want numbers now or just comments? I think probably just comments. comments Let's preserve yeah. the mystery. Yep, because we don't have the other two out here yet. So. Correct. Um, and it, it's too late, so they can't take your comments and uh, change what they're doing. So. From my perspective, I appreciate it. I appreciate it just how simple Chef Nelson's recipe was. The simplicity uh, really had a nice note with me. I'll say this, though, it was very dessert-like rather than appetizer-like. I like something a little more savory for my appetizer. This one had a very dessert-like feel to it. All right, all right, all right. Very good, BT, thank you. Sue, your thoughts on the brie? Well, nothing could be too sweet for me. <laughs> <laughs> 
I thought it was delicious. The presentation was beautiful. It was a beautiful play. Beautiful and a nice use of the rhubarb. Um, in fact, it was funny. Should I tell BT that you thought it was a biscuit instead of cheese? <laughs> that's before he. That's before he tasted it, though. It did look it, like a biscuit. It did. Yeah. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, I, I, I mean, I could eat sweet things for. I just had candy from Andrea Pessis out there. So. <laughs> anyway, it was delicious. Very good. Thanks, Sue. Wayne, your thoughts on our first appetizer? I was really impressed. Uh, I, I, you had made the comment too. Uh, you were a little. You were a little surprised and more impressed from Pinstripes. I've That's been to right. Pinstripes, yeah. etc. cetera. Uh, really well done. I didn't expect it to be that tasty and more, even more so. The presentation, I thought, was excellent. Uh, I agree with BT. It was a little, it, for me, it was a little, uh, little too sweet from a flavor standpoint. I understand Sue's point of view because she is sweet. You can't be too sweet, especially True. when you start with candy coming in. I, I, <laughs> I like your appetizer style. But it was excellent. It was a very good dish. Very good. Thanks, Wayne. Looks like our second appetizer is down, and that one from Pittsburgh Blue. Let's get Chef, Chef Berg to present his dish here. I'll give you this microphone, Brad. I can hold it if you want. All right, tell us what you did. Okay, right here we have uh, seared scallops. And it's just a real simple, straightforward uh, strawberry rhubarb puree. There is a little bit of chipotle and lime in there for some, for some uh, acid and a little bit of chipotle for some heat. Very good, Chef Berg from Pittsburgh Blue. Let's have a round of applause for their first appetizer that's down. The judges will taste. What a great variety of appetizers in the first round. From Pinstripes, we have the Brie. From Pittsburgh Blue, we have scallops. And look at the beautiful salad that we're about to get from Crave. I tell you what, I think if anybody went to any of these restaurants and ordered any of these dishes, you'd be a pretty happy camper about that, wouldn't you? We are, tw what are we, 21 minutes in? Is that about right? We're halfway. We're at about the 30-minute point. All right, very good. The official timekeeper says we're halfway home. All right, I'll be interested to hear what the judges have to say. This is a very interesting flavor com combination there with the rhubarb and the strawberry mixed to have that puree. Little hint of strawberry, but the spice is what makes it really interesting. So we'll hear from the judges there in just a minute when they're done scoring that dish. As that happens, Chef Evan Freeberg from Crave is plating just a gorgeous salad. I'm not sure I've ever had the combination of a rhubarb vinaigrette and bacon, but I like it. I like the sound of it. I think it'll be good. All right, very good. Are you ready? Is this nerve-wracking, the time limit? You're no, no, not at all. You're a pro. Definitely. There's always a time limit in a kitchen, but you're doing usually, you're doing what you know. That's right. And you know, when I'm, when I'm cooking in the kitchen, I usually have my general manager here yelling at me to get the food up in time. So now that she's not yelling at me, it's a little bit easier up here. This is your general manager right here? That very sweet looking woman yelling at you? I can't even imagine. Lo looks can be deceiving. Yeah. Well, don't we know that about women, don't we? That is true. All right. We have a bucket of time, so we're at about halfway, but they still have an entree to go. So both of those dishes will be counted here. 
Let's uh, give all of our chefs another round of applause. Give them some encouragement as they keep cooking here for the title of best chef from the Taste of Edina. Three great restaurants in Edina, a community that's really seeing some quality. It, it has a history of quality restaurants, but so many new places opening up, so much excitement in the food scene here in Edina. I really think the big story of 2014 is going to be the growth in restaurants in suburbs. Edina, Lake Minnetonka area, I think that is where we're seeing some of the most exciting changes in restaurants. And as someone who lives in the suburbs, I say thank you, it's about time. We're ready for it. I will say I anchor Channel 4's morning show, which is on from 4.30 until 7 in the morning. So I have been up today since 2.30 in the morning. And I have to say traffic when you drive to work at 3 a.m. is way better than driving to Edina at 5 o'clock. I don't know how you people deal with this every day, having cars on the road. I really recommend coming to work at 3 a.m. No problems driving in. You guys are done with your entree already? All right, you're gonna have to wait for, for the final appetizer to be presented. Are you guys ready for the next appetizer, judges? Let's clear out these plates and bring in the next one so we'll keep it flowing here. All right, we're gonna do uh, Chef Evan and get the judges have their taste of this. We'll try and do it quickly so Chef Nelson can present his entree. Evan, tell us what you did here. It's a beautiful salad. Okay, so um, we've got a mixed green salad with uh, crispy bacon, rhubarb vinaigrette, um, asparagus tips, and candied lemon zest on top, and a little bit of goat cheese as well. Now, I don't think you had time to candy lemon zest. Is that something you uh, brought along, or did you candy it? No, I did it right here. Just, how did you do it? You just, you zest the lemon. So I, so I zested the lemon. Um, I did blanch the lemons before I came, um, just drop them in some boiling water real quick. Zest the lemons, and then I made like a simple syrup, which is, you know, half water, half sugar. Um, a little bit of clove and a little bit of uh, cinnamon stick in there. Drop the zest in there for about six, seven minutes, pull it out, spread it out a little bit, and let it kind of dry. Cool, very good. Cool on top of a salad, a great, you can fancy up your cocktails at home. Yes, you could. Little, you could go simple, a little vodka tonic with that right on the edge, that'd be fun. Yes, it would. All right, very good, let's have a round of applause. Chef Evan Freeberg from Crave at the Galleria. All right, we'll give the judges one more second to finish their thoughts, and then we're gonna bring over the entrees from Pinstripes. Judges wanna take some quick notes and give some scores, and we'll bring over our next round. All right, let's bring out the entree from Chef Nelson Pinos and Pinstripes. There's a lot going on up here, isn't it? Pinstripes is done like that, boom, boom, boom. Oh, like the entree from Chef Nelson, uh, the appetizer, excuse me, now with the entree. I'm digging his expedience. I, yeah, I, like, yeah. I like keeping it cycled through in the, in the kitchen. No, that's right. No matter how great the food is, if you're sitting there waiting, 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 it really depends on the quality of the wine that you're waiting with, I think is the key there, BT. All right, take a look at this dish. Another beautiful presentation from Chef Nelson Pinos. 
Nelson, tell us, uh, tell us what you've got going on here. This looks beautiful as well. I did a uh, fin series collops, a uh, aruba butter sauce with a green uh, pea sweet puree and a little uh, watercress salad with the uh, rhubarb as well. The watercress salad is beautiful. I think it's very striking on the plate, right? Absolutely. You can't go wrong with that. <laughs> no, you sure can't. Is rhubarb, I'm doing the rhubarb butter sauce. I like that. I think that's an interesting choice. Is rhubarb a tough ingredient to work with? It depends. You know, it depends on what you're trying to make. If you're making a dessert, you know, it's easy because you can do, a, you know, a, an ice cream, ice cream rhubarb. Uh, if you're doing, like, you know, an appetizer, Nothing better than do the compost, but you know, I chose the brie because, from my perspective, I love the brie. You know, I love brie too. Absolutely, rhubarb. My mom used to make. Uh, we had, you know, you you plant one rhubarb plant in your yard, and you got rhubarb to feed a village for the next ten years. You know, so we had a lot of rhubarb pie. Absolutely, but I'm come from too. You know, as as the country that we have everything fresh, we grow right, by, you know, in the backyard, and uh, my from Ecuador. And uh, all my career started from, from scratch with my mom owning a little restaurant. And that's how I started getting into the cooking, you know, career. That's so cool. Your mom had a restaurant? Yes. And in I, Ecuador or here? In, in Ecuador. Cool. And, that's very cool. Yeah, and I helped her. And after, I, you know, I got into cooking with her, uh, there was no one who can push me out of, the, out, of, out of the kitchen. Who's the better cook, your mom or you? Oh, of course, my mom. That's the right answer. Chef Nelson Pinos, everyone. Congratulations. Thank you so much for being a part of our contest today. The judges are tasting, and I see a lot of smiles. They look very happy. We'll get their feedback on your dish in just a couple of minutes. But I think watching what happened right here live on our stage, if that doesn't make you want to go to Pinstripes and check it out, if you haven't been there, I don't know what will. I think that's uh, fantastic. All right, our other two chefs are still uh, working hard over here, cooking up their proteins. Looks like over here from Crave, we're working with... Uh... Oh, what do we have going over here, Evan? We've got a little chicken searing over there in the pan. And I'm just uh, julienning up some rhubarb here. We're going to get the rhubarb cooking here pretty soon. Now, in the Crave kitchen, I, I assume that you don't have to do a lot of julienning anymore, do you? I like to get back there and cook as much as I can. But... You gotta expedite, you gotta be at the front, right? Making sure the quality is there. That's right. All right, very good. A lot of times you'll see these executive chefs just on the other side of the line, making sure that everything comes out just the way they want it to. So the way this works is the general manager yells at the executive chef, and the executive chef yells at the sous chef, who yells at the cooks. The open kitchen concept has really been a bummer for people working in kitchens. They have to clean up their act a little bit, a little bit. If you want the real show, you want to sit as close to the kitchen as possible. You can hear what they really think. All right. We have 20 minutes left to go, 20 minutes left in the competition. We're looking at the big screen with what Pittsburgh Blue is up to. Brad, what are you guys doing over here? Uh, Dan's grating some ginger to put in our uh, in our chutney here, and uh, we got some pork chops going on the range, and I'm just tossing together a little arugula salad. All right. How do you guys feel about arugula? Do people like arugula in the room? Yes? Yeah, arugula I think is pretty accepted now, not too long ago, arugula. You'd taste it and say, oh, so bitter. Today I tasted dandelion greens. Dandelion greens, has anybody had that? I had raw dandelion greens. And the chef that was presenting it for a story where, that's gonna air next week, she's like, oh, try this. And I tried it and went, ugh, it was gross. But then she put it in a salad and it, it was uh, dressed and it was very good. It had a little bit of bitterness that was, was quite tasty, so. Sometimes you have to experiment with these ingredients.
judges, I want to ask if you uh, want to share some comments. I think we've been through a couple of appetizers that we haven't heard about. Let's let's start and see if uh, we can think back to the scallops appetizer from Pittsburgh Blue. I know you just had a scallops entree too, so. That's okay. Pittsburgh Blue had that uh, very bright, beautiful red sauce at the bottom with a little bit of spice, BT. Yeah, well, there was a, a really sort of a insouciant spice, sort of a casual come around and slap you on the back of the head in different spice. Yeah, you d it wasn't there up front and then there it was. Mm -hmm. So a nice little heat mixed in with the strawberry and the rhubarb puree. That was nice. Uh, I liked the rhubarb strips that were on top of the presentation there too. Those were right. rather nice. Pretty. Mm-hmm. Um, the you know that it's difficult to get a striking color when you've got something that's sort of a beige strawberry. Yeah. So that's that that's one problem I had with the color element. It wasn't of my scoring. As bold red. It wasn't as maybe. Not, yeah. yeah. And you can bring that out with the black plating a right. little bit as he did, but it still kind of sits there saying. There's a little bit of meh attached to that color. Gotcha. Sue, what did you think of that first uh, appetizer from Pittsburgh Blue? Well, I thought it was delicious. I thought um, it wasn't as sweet as I like. Right. No. <laughs> a little more spicy. Yeah. Uh, I think the, it was a beautiful presentation again. And boy, the scallop, scallop business must be very happy with all the scallops. <laughs> it's a lot of scallops, isn't right. it? Wayne, what did you think? I thought the scallops... The uh, the scallops were done perfectly. Yeah. Those are really the way you want scallops to be. Uh, I think the challenge was the color on the dish. It was that kind of milky, pinky red. It it was very tasty, but you know, it, without the scallops and you just look at it in the plate, you you didn't know what you were getting into. Yeah. But it ended up to be a very tasty dish. But I think really what took it there was the how well done the scallops were done perfectly. Perfect, Perfect scallops, good. All right, very good. What? Have you, have you scored why don't we, since we're talking, why don't we talk about the last appetizer we had, which was the salad from Evan at Crave. And that was the salad with the rhubarb vinaigrette and uh, bacon, had bacon on it. I'll begin again, Jason. And while I do that, you haven't, you've been sharing my plate with me, so I have a little taste Thank you, sir. of Chef Nelson's scallop entree with that watercress salad. Chef Evan's salad appetizer was quite nice. I liked it. It had a, uh, I like a nice mound of salad like that. And there were a lot of different elements in there. Uh, very tasty. I do think that the bacon tended to take over a little bit in the taste profile. But that rhubarb vinaigrette really shined through. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't disappointed in that and all. And with rhubarb being the secret ingredient, I'm wanting to taste really taste rhubarb, rhubarb as a key element in what they're putting out in regard yeah. to the taste profile and that, that came through nicely in that vinaigrette sue i was a little surprised with how rhubarby the vinaigrette was pleasantly surprised i, I, I thought I it was good i think you got a good taste of it because mine was more vinegar yours was more vinegar vinegary, right, yeah yeah and uh, the salad was beautiful though i mean if that was brought out to you at a dinner you would think that was plenty of salad, really, really good. I think he used more pork belly than bacon, though. Yeah, you had a lot of fattiness. Yeah, I'm not a big pork belly fan. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got, well, no, I won't tell you what I think. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne, I think you had the same reaction to the bacon, right? Yeah, I did. Sue, so if you can get some sweet pork belly, you'd be okay, right? Be fine. That's good. Yeah. Just we're getting a glaze. We're getting the pattern here tonight. Real nice glaze. Yeah. You know, the thing with bacon nowadays, I mean, who basically who doesn't like bacon? But I think you have to be very selective when you use it and particularly how much you use it. Yeah. I thought without the bacon or just a tad of bacon in this, this would have been a spectacular salad. I yeah. really enjoyed it. The flavor was good. It looked very beautiful. Uh, it ended up to be you know, good and flavorful, but I, uh, like I say, I think it's, it's, uh, it's a very uh, uh, popular item to put into everything nowadays, yeah. and I think less is better. Good. Yeah, you see that a lot, I'll be honest. You guys judge a fair number of cooking competitions, and often it's one ingredient where you say, like, oh, maybe if that wasn't there, this would have been a home run dish instead of a double. Editing is Mr. Baseball. Mr. Baseball. That's, little, that's for K-Twin. Thank you, buddy. Well, I really to appreciate help the reference. A anything I can do. K-Twin, what? You guys have the Saints games, right? That's what you play <laughs> on that station? Yeah. Although we will throw some props <laughs> out to our St. Paul 
hometown guys who open their season tonight, my friend. Right, tonight is the yep. beginning of the same. Boy, what a beautiful night for baseball. Yes, isn't it? indeed. Oh, it's the best. I will say this much as well. Our hometown Minneapolis team boys came out in the 10th inning and bested the that? world champ Red Sox 4-3. Right? to three. And they took two out of three against the Red two Sox. Two out of three and two out of three against the Tigers, yeah. too. Yeah, did anybody see that coming? On those rubber game matches, we're 6-0 and on the season so far, so that's pretty fun. It's been fun. I have a six-year-old who is sports obsessed, obsessed. He's got a Timberwolves poster in his bedroom signed by the guys on the team, and every night before bed he studies it. I don't know what he's studying, but he's just staring at the poster. He's getting into Minecraft. He wants his Minecraft name to be like Kevin Love, something or another. Maybe he's going to be a world-class forger, like that Catch Me If You Can guy. <laughs> Maybe that's what he's doing. Sure. Wouldn't be surprised. The youngest one, you got to keep an eye on the youngest kid. Does he have something over the door like Notre Dame that he slaps every time he goes out in the morning? <laughs> this kid, I've had, to, I've had to bone up on the sports because he knows all the stats. Back when I was a kid, we would read the box scores in the paper, right? And it would... Usually you'd hit about third or fourth grade and start obsessing on the box scores. Now they have these the apps. So he, before he goes to bed every night, says to me, sports? Sports? He wants his sports update. So we have to go and check. Give him the twin score before he goes to bed, That's the wild good. score, whatever it is. That's He's into great. it. Maybe he'll get you the sports app for Father's Day. Drop a hint so you yes. can keep up. That would be nice, right? Actually, what you meant to say, Jason, is before you go to bed, he gets to stay up later than you. <laughs> My wife does joke that she puts all her boys to bed at the same, at time. The same time. We all go to bed about 8 o'clock at night. <laughs> so we assure you tonight we'll wrap up by Jason's bedtime. That was the deal that we made with the Edina Chamber of Commerce. How are we doing on time? Speaking of which, 12 minutes? We have just 12 minutes to go. Let's have a nice round of applause for all of our contestants. I want to bring up one of our other sponsors, and I think she's on TV as much as I am. Where's Angela Warner? Oh, you're not on. You're not on. You're looking for it's Auntie Carla. Carla. Where'd Carla go? Oh, there she is. Carla's on TV more than I am. That's right. We love Warner Stallion. It's where I got my appliances from. You have another... Uh, Another one of the relatives is a Marquette grad, your sister, so I know your sister pretty well. And uh, you guys, thanks so much for being a part of it. You're welcome, we're happy to be here. I see you brought the little green egg out here. The big green egg. The big green egg. The big green egg. Big, little, I don't know. He wanted to cook on it instead. I, don't, I think we all want to cook on that thing, right? It's a beautiful grill. This is the time of year you guys are really moving a lot of grills. It's more than just a than your kitchen appliances at Warner Stallion, right? That's right, grill season is uh, in full force and this weekend is our Grill Expo. Oh, it's this weekend, cool. We're gonna be having live demos uh, both days at all eight stores. And of course your store, you're very close right here in Edina. Yeah, we're across the street here. Yeah, really great. Warner Stallion, what you gotta love about it, you can get appliances at a lot of different places, but you got a family that's rooted right here in the community that's been doing it for so long. You guys will beat everybody, anybody's price, so why would you go? To, why would you go anywhere else? You know. Yes, that's true. We will do that, and uh, we're celebrating our 60th year this year. 60 year? Yes. Wow, fantastic! Hey, thank you so much for being a part of it. Nice to see you. Let's have a nice round of applause for Warner Stallion. Great local family, continuing to thrive here in Edina. The Edina one's been here for 10 years. 10 years over there, right? That's 10th anniversary this year, really good. All right, we're getting down to it. We got about 10 minutes left to rock here. Is everything going all right? Has anybody had any disasters over here? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> now you notice the chefs keep tasting throughout as they're cooking. I will say this is something I've learned from watching these competitions. At home, I think we tend to cook and hope for the best. And when you look at a chef, they're constantly tasting, tasting the sauce, tasting the, taking, tasting their seasonings, making sure everything is just the way they want it. Helps you avoid that over-salting that sometimes you'll do. 
The other thing I've learned is if you wonder why food is so much better at a restaurant than when you cook it at home, the answer is very simple, butter. It is butter. They use so much more butter than you and I use at home, probably. I was wondering where Chef Chef Nelson was. He was calling his mom, saying, "I'm making sure I gave you bigger props." That was smart. On stage. It was a smart, very smart move. It's fun to me how many of our chefs got starts either because their family was involved in a restaurant, or got to start like like Evan did, doing something very entry level at a restaurant. You're washing dishes, but you're just around it. You learn to love it. You get sucked in by the culture. When I used to work at night at Channel 4, I did a segment called Good Question, and I worked from 2 to 11 at night. And I always felt like I was working the same hours as restaurant people. And we would see each other at the bar after work. And now that I go to work at three in the morning, well, sometimes I see them coming home from the bar. <laughs> and, and, when you're at, and when you're at the bar before the morning That's show. That's right. Now, I'm at lunch at 12.30 ordering a drink, and people are looking like, uh-huh. I'm like, I've been up for 10 hours. It's remember, happy hour for I remember me. my morning show days. Yeah. yeah that, that, you get a lot of judgmental looks, that don't That cocktail you? at 1 o'clock or yeah, so. It's fine. Hey. It's fine. It's fine. Of course, on our show, we do cocktail segments on the show at 5 in the morning. We have consultants come in and say, Minnesota, this is maybe the only place besides Wisconsin where you could do a liquor segment at 5.20 in the morning. Like, yep, that's, that is true. We'll follow that up with a segment about running so you can work it all off. You know, that's, that's the reality. We love to eat. We love to be outside here. All right, we're getting, it's happening here. Chef uh, Chef Berg and his sous chef Dan here starting to plate their dish. Pork loin looking good. All right, we have six minutes to go, six minutes left in the competition. I want to bring up one more sponsor. Think Mutual Bank. Chris Barnick is the Vice President of Consumer Banking. Chris, come on up. Let's have a nice round of applause for Think Mutual Bank. How you doing, Chris? It's great to have you here. Great to have you guys on board. Uh, tell us about your guys' involvement in the community in Edina. Well, first of all, Jason, we're very happy to be the, the title sponsor for today's event. And uh, Dinah's a great community. We've been in the community for 18 or 19 years. and uh, Really? That long? Almost 20 years? Yes. Yes. Uh, we have four branch locations in the Twin Cities. And uh, we've been involved in the Dinah Community Foundation, the city of Edina. Um, and we want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. It's a great event. And uh, we're very proud to be a sponsor of tonight's event. Now, I know I've seen it around. You guys have a new branch here in Edina, right? Yes, we just broke ground uh, on May 5th. We're going to be uh, right in the heart of a lot of vibrant change, just east of Byerly's on, uh, on Hazelton Road. So we're very excited about the new branch location. What a great spot, right? So much is going on over there. It is. It's exciting. We're right on the promenade, and uh, it's a great way for us to better serve our customers, give back to the community. And we're also going to have a community room in our bank on the second floor. We've found that so many local, city, uh, community, and nonprofit organizations don't have a place to properly to, uh, uh, to meet, to do the work they're going to have. Yeah, you just want to you want to sit around, you want to talk, and people don't want to do it in their house. Their house or a loud restaurant, so it's going to be a free charge uh, for those community members to use that room. How cool, what a great contribution to the community to let people come in and use that space, and, and it's all about, I mean, if you think about the business of a bank, what you're doing is you're helping people, you're helping businesses, you're helping build the community, really. Exactly, and I think that's one of our big differences. We're a mutual bank, so we're actually owned by our customers. And so at the end of the day, our customers are our owners, and we're responsible to make sure we're doing the right things for them. And part of that is giving back to our community, and so that's why we're excited to be here tonight. Chris, we're glad to have you here. Thanks so much for being a part of the event. Thanks, Josh. And Jason, I appreciate it. All right, thank Mutual Bank. Chris Barnick, thank you so much. Title sponsor of Taste of, Eva uh, Taste of Edina. 
All right. All right, Wayne is trying to poach Chef Talent, so we'll have him sit back down. Classic, classic move. All right, Brad Berg from Pittsburgh Blue has presented his entree. Brad, tell us what you've done. Uh, here we have a pan-roasted pork chop, a little bit of arugula, fennel, and apple salad, uh, and then it's a rhubarb jalapeno chutney and a little bit of lemon thyme olive oil. Very cool. Was this, were there any challenges working with the ingredients for you here or working on this date? Uh, it's always a challenge, but uh, being a chef, we're used to dealing with challenges all day, every day. That is true. Let's have a nice round of applause for Chef Brad Berg and Pittsburgh Blue. It's a pretty looking dish. Again, all of our chefs doing a beautiful job with presentation tonight. All right, Chef Evan Freeberg is going to present his dish from Crave in the Galleria. Three great restaurants right within a couple of blocks of each other. All right. Chef, tell us, uh, tell us about your dish. All right, so rhubarb is definitely a tough ingredient to work with. So I kind of, what I did here is I sauteed some rhubarb with some ramps, which are in season as well. Rhubarbs and ramps kind of come into season together. So I did that with a little bit of toasted um, um, pistachio, a uh, little bit of garlic, and um, a little bit of pecorino cheese and olive oil with some pan seared chicken around the side, um, a little bit of arugula mixed into the sauce, and then again, I instead of doing candied lemon, I did some candied rhubarb on the top and a little mound. I also did a little bit of Fresno chili in there, which is a little milder than jalapeno to kind of cut some of the sweet and the tart and give a little bit of balance in the flavor to it. Boy, Fresno is a great ingredient to work with, I think, because for someone like me who likes heat, it gives you a taste of it, but it's not so intense that it irritates people who don't like the heat. Exactly, yeah, and you know, if you take the seeds out of them too, they really have this great, sweet heat kind of flavor. They're, they're just wonderful. And they have a nice bright red color that can really add a lot to a dish. Well, you can find them at Whole Foods, obviously. They brought them over for you. Chef Evan Freeberg from Crave, let's have a nice round of applause. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna let the judges finish up their scoring. While they do that, I just wanna make a couple announcements. We wanna remind you that while you're here, you can vote for your favorite restaurant of all of the restaurants that are here exhibiting tonight and for your favorite Edina cake design. And you can do that vote right at the registration desk. And the winner of that gets free advertising from the chamber. We also want to thank all of the food and beverage sponsors for tonight. Our sponsors tonight, we introduce you to some of them. Think Mutual Bank, the Westin Edina Galleria. What a great venue here at the Westin. Edina Liquor, Whole Foods, Warner's Stellion Appliances, We want to thank PSAV for their work over here tonight as well. Buzz360, we want to thank them for building the new tasteofedina.com website, a very nice site. The th City of Edina, Steve Grossom, Laura Hutchinson, Rochelle Peterson, and all the event volunteers who made this possible tonight. We want to thank the staff for the chamber, Lisa Marsden and Laura Hutchinson. And Erica Hollum. Erica is the membership services director for the Dyna so Chamber of Commerce. Know who you are. So it's Erica who really put so much of her time and talent and passion into making this chef's competition a great event. So thank you to Erica for getting this done. We appreciate it. And we're getting there. We're getting to the competition. The winner gets a beautiful trophy, I see. I'll tell you what, the judges are gonna have a tough time. Because I tasted all these entrees and all the appetizers, and they're both worth the same, right? So if you had one chef had an appetizer that was the best, another chef had an entree that was the best, and then we see how it all washes out in the scores. I believe we have a team of... A, oh, Wayne! You know, Jason, I, I'd like to give a shout out for something you mentioned earlier about the restaurants and over the years. Yeah. I work with a, some of the best chefs in the country with Taste of the NFL, and certainly I've been in the restaurant business a long time and had some for, good fortune with that. Over the last number of really eight to ten years, I'd really like everybody in the room that likes food 
to pay closer attention to the chefs and the restaurants of Minnesota and certainly the Twin Cities. There are so many gems coming out that we are, we are, we've got a steady drumbeat of making a mark in, in the culinary world. And as I travel around to these other NFL cities, they know it. They know that yeah. there are some great restaurants coming on here. Uh, uh, people are coming back, as, as evidenced yeah. by Chef Case and et cetera. How about that? We have a chef, from, a very prominent chef from New York City. Yep, yep. And who's and, coming and back here to open up his restaurant. They're coming back, and you, yeah. you look at these different pockets. And we have of, chefs staying on top of it, too. It's not just that it's chefs who maybe 20 years ago would have left to go somewhere bigger or better. Yeah, yeah so pay attention, everybody, if you, if you like great food obviously you're here uh look local yeah look at, at these restaurants and also look at the local ingredients that they're using so so more often lenny russo's and all these other guys it's happening here it's it's uh it's not on the the, the headlines nationally yet but uh we should be very proud of these young chefs that are coming up and being creative and uh, putting out some great food and wonderful restaurants i will say wayne it drives me nuts when you have people in the twin cities who will think nothing of flying to Las Vegas or flying to New York or San Francisco and will go spend a ton of money on eating out. But you ask them where they eat out here at home and they're like, well, you know, I don't really go anywhere. Yeah, it, it drives like, me crazy Go too. out! You, you, you gotta check this out here because it, it, somehow people think food tastes better when you go somewhere else and right. you're in a fancy right. town or... The, <laughs> yeah. and, and I'll tell you, I if we weren't on the air, yeah. I'll tell you 10 restaurants that are very well known nationally that really aren't as good as it's cracked up to be. Yeah. And, and Minnesota could kick some butt on you know these these young chefs. And I'm so proud of the the, the scene. I'm the old guy, you know, but the yeah. new scene of all these chefs coming up, there's uh, the best is yet to come. I think you're right. What you need to do to capture the romance of that moment is you need to do like a staycation here in town where you get out of your house, you go, and my wife and I, one uh, weekend every year, we've lived here, we'll go stay in a hotel in the Twin Cities and then treat the town like we would if we were tourists. And it gives you that romance of that experience of eating out without the stress of the pile of laundry or whatever you have to do at home. Wayne was far more praise-filled and less curmudgeonly than his wife usually thinks he is. So that was really, <laughs> it was good, that right? was a wonderful really moment. Good. I'm gonna add a layer just to what you said, Wayne. It's very analogous to the theater scene here in the Twin Cities in that for a long time, people didn't really realize the quality of the theater programs, the quality of the actors and directors and playwrights in this area. And they always thought, you got to fly to New York and see Broadway and off-Broadway. And it was right out their own back door. And now we're seeing that same level of quality and acuity and sense of direction happening with the restaurant industry as well. And you've been singing this song for years, Sue, that people have to get out there and support these. Not, not only support them, but really... It should, you should go every month, not once a year, and yeah. have your staycation. Well, we're going every week. I'm not staying in a hotel every month. <laughs> All right, I know you, you eat. You know how, look at this yeah, belly. You know how often I'm no, eating No, you, you're fantastic, and you've supported <laughs> yeah. the, the uh, restaurants. I yeah. also have to shout out for the women chefs in town, too, because yes. we have all of a sudden these fabulous one women chefs, the two, the ones that uh, started the Chef Shack on a cart and started all the, yeah. the, the carts. Now they have two restaurants of their own, so, and they've, they've been trained in New York just like the men have. And You're so we, right. Uh, that's Lisa Carlson and, um, what's her partner's name? Okay. It'll come to me. Okay, but anyway, they're two great women chefs. There's Linda Quinn over at, at Cafe Latte. Uh, Brenda, Sarah, Sarah Brenda, Master, Sarah and Master, Barbad, Mona, uh, Chain, uh, yeah, right. restaurant it, Mona, right? So and then owners too, like Kim, that's, uh, Kim Bartman. Like Kim Bartman, she's yeah. a chain in herself. She is. Yeah. <laughs> she really is. Well, this is really exciting to see the people supporting the restaurant scene and also supporting everything that goes on in Edina. Really you just good. can't get enough in Edina, can you? No. <laughs> what, a, what a shock that Edina would have a cake contest, too. I, I, I know. I, so I, cliche. I live here, and I, I, so I don't cliche. know where that came from. The cake eaters with their cake contest, <laughs> right. I tell you. Who Sometimes you got to embrace it, right? Just embrace it. Do they have a winner of the cake contest, or don't we know? Well, I, I don't know. Do we? Well, oh, they have, to, they have to tally it up. Oh, okay. So that'll be counted later. Do we have a winner of this contest? Oh, we do. We have a winner of our local chef challenge here at the Taste of Edina. Do we want to bring our three chefs back up on stage? Yes, please. Let's give them a huge round of applause. Brad Berg, Evan Freeberg, and Nelson Pinos. Thank you both, so all three of you, so much. Such great work.
Now, uh, all of these were judged, and we're going to get the results right now. All right. Was it close, Erica? It was pretty close, yeah. It was within about five points each. Within about five points. All right. So we'll start. There's no losers in this competition. But we'll start with third place. And our third place winner is Evan Freeberg from Crane. Thanks, Evan. Congratulations. Appreciate it. All right. Oh, you get this too. It's a gift certificate to Crave. So, <laughs> sorry. It's not, is it? No, okay, it's not. I'm just kidding. It's for, oh, it's for Cooks of Crocus Hill is where your gift certificate is. Very nice. In second place, and very, very close, Brad Berg from Pittsburgh Blue. Congratulations, Brad. And our winner of the first Taste of Edina competition from Pinstripes, Nelson Pinos. Congratulations, Nelson. Your beautiful dish right up there. Oh, look at this. Here, here's your trophy, sir. Hold it up proudly. Bring your sous chef up. You got to buy him dinner, I think. And you guys also get this. Judges, thank you so much. BT, Sue Zellickson, Wayne Kostrowski. You guys, you love the you love the pinstripes. You love Nelson's entree. Both of those were really nice. They're yeah. both great. It was close. I mean, it, it truly it was it was tough. And you know what? I think that a lot of the difference ended up is you you, know, you may have liked the the first dish a lot and the second one not so much, and then you balanced out the other way somehow. But yeah, there's scores. I'll tell you, there's some great creations up there and. Hats off to you guys. Thanks for doing yep, this. To all of you. Yeah, absolutely. Let's great have job. one. Let's have another round of applause for our great chef contestants and their sous chefs. Thank you all so much. Thank you for your time and your donation of being here and your talent and the support of your restaurants for having you guys here tonight. We appreciate it. Congrats to the chefs. Thanks again for everybody for coming out. Have a great night.